Hey all, this will be a quick video continuing from the C Sharp Windows Defender Bypass video that we have did earlier. The link will be in the video's description. So basically, if you paid enough attention to the previous video, the reverse shell that was executed was just a plain reverse shell. This is because if we were to use a metaprinter reverse shell, the shell code bytes will be much bigger and it will be harder to copy and paste for the AES encryption and into the program.cs file. If you want a full-fledged metaprinter shell that has all the good stuff in it, it is also possible to do so. In this short video, we will quickly demonstrate how. Let's generate a metaprinter reverse shell and output it to a file, beacon.bin. We can see that the size is much bigger compared to a plain reverse shell that we did previously. So what we can do here to make our life much easier is to read the shell code as a file instead. We will not have to copy and paste the shell code bytes over to the CS file. Let's copy the shell code beacon.bin file over to our Windows first. Let's modify the AES encrypt file to change how the shell code is being input. Instead of copying and pasting the shell code as bytes, we can change it to use the method read all bytes to read from the beacon.file directly. It will be much cleaner. This will then perform AES encryption on the beacon.bin metaprinter shellcode file. We will need to base64 encode it so that we can get a string value and use the string value in our program.cs file. Let's do that. Let's recompile it and execute it. We should be able to get a base64 encoded string that contains the AES encrypted metaprinter shellcode. Let's output it to a file instead. It will be much easier to copy and paste the string. Alright, let's copy all of this and use it in our program.cs file now. So what we have is a base64 encoded string containing the AES encrypted metaprinter shellcode. We will need to perform the reverse in the program.cs file in order to execute it. Okay, let's change the password bytes as well. Instead of hard coding it to be the pass value, we will take the password byte from the command line argument instead. This means that we will need to supply the pass value when executing the program later on. The AES shellcode value should be the base64 decoded value of the encoded string. And that's all the changes we need to modify. It's pretty straightforward. Let's try and compile the program and execute it. Let's copy the program to the desktop folder, which is not in our Windows Defender exclusion folder. Let's execute the program.exe file to see if our metaprinter reverse shell payload can bypass Windows Defender. Before that, let's set up the listener on our Kali to receive the incoming metaprinter reverse shell. Let's execute the program now on our Windows. This triggered a cloud scan because all of our Windows Defender features are turned on. We forgot to supply the pass value as argument. Let's do that now so that the program can perform the AES decryption of the shellcode. Let's execute the program file again. Awesome! We managed to get a metaprinter reverse shell callback bypassing Windows Defender completely. I will be concluding the video here. Thanks all. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks. Bye.